Adobe recently released some new features for a Premiere Pro Beta, primarily how to custom audio fade. So in this video, I want to showcase that workflow as well as give some of my thoughts on that whole process. So let's hop right into it. Upon opening up Premiere Pro Beta, first thing that sticks out to me actually isn't the custom audio functions, it's the somewhat new color scheme. And I think that this is really nice. It's kind of modernizing how Premiere Pro looks step by step. Over here to the left, you can really tell how the color scheme is a little bit deeper and I think a little bit darker in their color tones. You can see that there's a little stroke around the label. For reference, let's go over here to the current version of Premiere Pro, everything's a little bit brighter in tone. How that translates down to the timeline though, is let me just make this uh, full screen. Look at how a clip darkens after you've unenabled it. So right here, these clips are unenabled on the top, but if I re-enable it, look at the difference in the color scheme. It gives a good bird's eye view of what is enabled and what is not. For reference, let's go back to here, the top clip, if I unenable this, I'm just accustomed to seeing this because I've been using Premiere Pro for so long, but I welcome this kind of look. It's very nice. Another big visual thing I noticed right off the bat is the captions track has made the font bigger and lighter. So here we have a darker orange color with that white font. If you look at the previous version or the current version of Premiere Pro 2024, the captions track is a little bit smaller and it's this darker font on the same color. I do like what they've done here to make things much more noticeable at a bird's eye view, just bigger and easier to manage or see where you're at at a glance with this version of it. Kudos for that. Now let's get into the main update of how you create custom audio fades. Before in Premiere Pro, you're probably used to audio fades that look like this. If I wanted to create an audio fade right here, I could go between my two clips, right click and apply default transition. That would create a little constant power audio fade right there. Another way to do that with just hotkeys is hit shift command D and that will create a constant power fade throughout everything. But if you want to create custom fades, how do you do that? Here in Premiere Pro Beta, what they've done is instead of having to go right click, apply a default transition, what you can do now is just click and drag on the clip. And you now have the ability to create these custom logarithmic or exponential lines with your fade. If I wanted to create a custom fade between both of these, I'm just gonna hit that same shift command D and now I've created a fade between both. It's very intuitive how it works though. So all I need to do is click right here and the moment I click and drag, it just automatically adjusts it. What's also neat is that if I go up or down while holding the mouse, it will automatically move those lines along with it. Very intuitive. What we had before was, <laughs> was not as intuitive. So if you bring up your effects controls, so I'm gonna hit shift five, and right here are my effects controls for the fade that I just had up right here. If I click on this fade, we get a couple of different options. Right here, we have the constant power, which is what you saw. And I can click and drag this fade around so it will move that fade on the timeline. I can also go over here, start at cuts, end at cuts, and that will move that around. But I don't have the ability to change how those fades look. Inside the older version, you would have to go to your effects, so shift seven to bring up my effects window, go to audio transitions, crossfade, and right here is constant power, but if you wanted a constant gain, you'd click and drag that onto the clip, click this, and now you can see our constant gain. Same thing with exponential fade, you would need to click it, click it again. That's a lot of clicks, and I did not realize that this kind of workflow was that many clicks until they showcase a better way of doing it inside Premiere Pro Beta. And that's why I think this whole new workflow is going to be a game changer when it comes to creating your audio fades on the fly in a customized audio fade. One quick tip here is if you want to create custom audio fades so you don't pop the microphone. For reference, listen to the transition between these two clips. 
filler words like um and ah by clicking here to highlight. So there's a little blip right there that can easily be alleviated by a crossfade between the two clips. With all of your track targeting toggled on for the tracks that you want to apply crossfades to, you can hit shift command D. By default, my crossfade is two frames long. What this normally would be for you, if you haven't changed it, would be one second long. So let me show you where you can change that. Up in here in Mac, it's Premiere Pro settings. On Windows, I forget where your settings are, but if you just go up to help and look for settings, it'll pop up. And more so if you were to just look up timeline and help, it'll pop up. So we wanna go down to timeline and right here, audio transition default duration. I ha have switched this to frames. This by default is seconds. I've switched it to frames and I have done two frames. You could actually go s shorter than that by doing something like 0.1 seconds. That's not what I want to do. I think two frames is the perfect amount of duration for an effect like this. I'll hit okay. Um, and ah, by clicking. So that blip is still there. It sounds a little bit better, but I need to adjust this a little bit. So I'm going to hold command on Mac or hold control on windows and bring up my rolling edit tool. Just move this over a little bit and let's see what we're working with. Um, and ah, by clicking here to now I want to apply a crossfade like that to every single one of my jump cuts. And I don't wanna do that every single time. So all I need to do is highlight all of these clips. And because I've set that default duration to two frames, I can just hit Shift Command D. At least now I have every single one of those crossfades here on the timeline. And all I need to do is adjust them if I hear something. But for the most part, they probably sound good. Now on the flip side of that, let's say you created all of these transitions and you wanted to get rid of them. And here is where I'm going to go back to the original version of Premiere Pro because right now in the beta, this isn't working, which is completely fine. It's beta. I'm sure they just haven't coded this yet. It's a thing called simplify sequence. I'm gonna go here and apply all of those crossfades crossfades like I did before. So I'm going to hit shift command D on my Mac. And you can see that all of those crossfades were added to all of these clips. In this circumstance, I could hit command Z to get rid of them, but I want to show you how to actually get rid of all of them. If you go up here to sequence, simplify sequence, and I've already had these um, selected, but uh, I'm not going to close vertical gaps. I'm just going to do transitions and click audio tracks. And it's going to create a new sequence that's simplified. If I hit simplify, all of my audio transitions have been removed from these tracks. So I wouldn't worry too much that this feature doesn't really work inside Premiere Pro beta right now. If I were to go to simplify sequence, transitions, audio tracks, hit simplify, nothing happens. It's okay, it's beta. By the time it gets to the real version of Premiere Pro, that'll be fixed. The biggest critique I would have on audio fading inside Premiere Pro with this new system is the ability to visually see our waveforms go up and down as we level out our clips. So let's say right here on this clip, if I hold command, create my four keyframes right there. The moment I click and drag this down, I want to see the audio waveform decrease in size to represent what the actual volume or level of the audio is. How this represents itself in the current version of Premiere Pro, create a cut right here with Command K, create a cut right here with Command K, and then hit G to bring up my audio gain and then do minus 15, whatever it needed to be, then highlights all of these and create my crossfade. And that's how I would level out the volume because it's visually better to me doing it this way than with the keyframes. That's not everyone's workflow, but that's how I've worked in the past just to see the waveforms go down in their decibels as opposed to using keyframes and not seeing anything happen on the clip. That's my biggest critique here is if we're overhauling how crossfades happen inside Premiere Pro, can we please add the functionality visually of seeing the audio waveforms go down to represent their decibel level, how they actually sound to the user. That being said, I love how this looks. Um, the other thing I haven't touched on are these icons right here. I personally don't use the workflow of Essential Sound, but if you did, now it's super simple to bring that up. 
per clip. So right here on this clip, if I just click this, it brings up the essential sound panel and you can start editing the EQ, the dynamics straight from there. If it were the music, so like right here is that clip. If I click there, it would be the music, so on and so forth. That's a huge time saver for those of you that use the essential sound panel on a regular basis. Um, don't get me wrong, trust me, I use the enhanced speech all the time, but my background was in Pro Tools, so I actually learned how to use that before I even clicked the mouse inside Premiere Pro for like six years or even more than that, I was in Pro Tools. So everything that I do audio editing wise really comes from a workflow using the audio track mixer. So putting clips on specific tracks and then applying my effects to those tracks so it treats the dialogue, the VO, the music, the sound effects, all similar in levels and things of that nature. But I, I have nothing wrong with essential sound. It's just the way that I learned using the audio track mixer is faster for me in my workflow specifically. But just know that you got these sweet icons here now to bring up the essential sound panel. One thing to note though, is that before we didn't have those icons, we have these little effects buttons and you might ask yourself, where's the effects button? Well, if you go over here to the wrench, all you need to do is go up to show effects badges and that brings back up our effects. You can just click that, right click it. And now you have the same thing that was there before. You could do the channel volume, you could keyframe, bypass, panner, add effects, all those things. It's all right there, it's just, a little bit easier for those of you that just use the essential sound to click those right there. Let me know what you think of all the updates coming to Premiere Pro in the comments down below. Until next time, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you are out there living a life of abundance. Bye.